Uh, basically, what you need to know about this program is most of the problems with it come from eligibility determinations. And where you really need to be skeptical is when people are qualifying under non-revenue declines. So there's two parts of the program, um, just as like a basic sketch. The first part is just, do you qualify under certain revenue declines um, on a quarterly basis? <clears throat> And you can look up what those those are. Um, if you're interested in like that actual testing, we have resources on our website that provide the information on that. But did the client have quarterly revenue declines? Yes or no, when you compare back to 2019. And if somebody's thinking that they qualify, you know, under not using those provisions and using the government restriction provisions, you have to tread very carefully. Those rules are very specific. You need specific government orders. You want a lot of operational data. You want quantitative data from the client, not just a narrative about how they were disrupted. And you really need to under you uh, you just need to be very skeptical when somebody's going to try to qualify under those provisions, just because a lot of people get confused with wanting to use just general pandemic disruptions as qualifying rather than you know the real way it's written is you need a government restriction. And that company had to modify their operations as a direct cause from that government restriction and not just general pa pandemic chaos. So I think that's the kind of the long and short of what I think any practitioner should know if they have a client approaching them, especially if they say, oh, this company told me I qualify for, you know, six quarters under a supply chain disruption. Very suspicious, <laughs> you know, yeah. like 99% chance that's bad. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, so I'd say those, not those two pieces of it. So, so the original intent of the legislation was, hey, if you if your revenue went down, if you really had as a business owner, you had a pretty severe negative impact on your revenue, this will help you. Yeah. And or if if a for some reason you couldn't operate because of a government restricted restriction, we can help you. Is that is that kind of the basic outline of the intent? Yeah, the yeah. intent behind it was, you know, you suffered either a revenue financial loss for whatever reason. So we're just going to make it a pure financial test. Yeah. Um, or we, uh, you know, us as government agencies restricted your ability to operate. So even if you didn't have those revenue losses, but you were, you know, working really hard to make up for all these restrictions we had. So you have kind of a phantom financial loss there. And you kept your people on payroll and you were paying wages during this period and you didn't just boot everybody to unemployment, we're going to compensate you for it Okay. because we wanted to, you know, the original intent was that people were going to take this in real time. And so it was going to prevent employers from saying, hey, you know what? Things are getting a little tough. Everybody on the team go on unemployment for two months and then come back when things are normal again. That's the behavior they were trying to prevent. Um now, with the administration of it, because the delays were so long and the rules were confusing and nobody really could apply in real time with a good conscience because it was just too too many unknowns, it just didn't end up working out that way. So now it's kind of a retroactive, um, you know, IOU <laughs> from them yeah. for that time period. So it's, I don't know if it's really a successful program, to be honest, just because the administration of it was so, you know, backwards. Yeah. yeah.